Hello to the gamers, welcome, welcome back. Can I tell you something that happened to me this weekend? Like many people, I have a group chat with uh, friends of mine who are scattered about the world now. We were all connected together for a brief period in college. I was just shooting the, the smack in the group chat, right? And I was talking to a, a friend of mine in there, and I was, uh, you know, he was talking about how his life's going, I was talking about how my life's going, I was talking about how I'm a little burned out on um, parenting, a little light on free time lately, and he started talking to me like, very, you know, I've been friends with this guy for 20 years, and he started saying things like, you know what, like, don't forget that the work you do is like very valuable, and like, you've helped a lot of people, and it's like a noble cause and stuff like that, and I was kind of like, why is this guy, I mean, like, he's not being a, uh, Rude, if anything, he's just being so nice that, like, the vibe was a little bit different than it normally is. But I was like, it's, it's fine. We were talking about life. A couple hours later, bing bong, check the group chat, and I'm looking for my messages. And I'm like, what the hell? None of my four hours of messages were in the group chat. Where did they go? Turns out, homie was in the DMs with me. I thought that I was in the group chat, and thus the vibe was a little bit more casual. But from his perspective, I DM'd him out of the blue and was like, hey, I'm having a rough time right now, which is not even the tone of what it was, but I think that's how he had to take it. <laughs> Pretty good, right? I was, I was laughing. I, I told the group chat, I was like, hey, I've been talking to this guy for, you know, like two and a half hours on and off while my daughter's in between classes and stuff. Uh, I didn't even realize that I wasn't in the group chat. I was wondering why nobody else was chiming in. I thought it was a great conversation. But I was like, man, I must be making the vibe like super off because he's given me like the don't kill yourself sort of conversation. <laughs> and I was just sort of like, ah, I'm, I'm doing all right. But like, it'd be nice to have an hour and a half to play Balatro sometimes. Good friend, though. Yeah, he was telling me like, don't, don't do anything rash. Join a rec softball league and stuff like that. He was pulling out all the stops. And I was like, man, I think I'm okay. Hey, Anel, you seen any of the Fallout series yet? We need to criminalize unauthorized use of the word yet. I have not seen the Fallout series yet. Uh, I will never see the Fallout series in all likelihood. It's not uh, on my list of things to do. It's not a desire that I harbor in my cerebellum. It's, uh, it's merely yet another media property that I personally have no interest in uh, interacting with. It's good? Yeah, here's the, they're all good, basically. We're looking for something a cut above that. No, they aren't. They, they mostly are. People are like, you know, 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Like, most television programs that come out these days get somewhere between an 80 and a 100 on Rotten Tomatoes. They, they give the reviewers the first three episodes, they pose interesting questions, and then with no answers, the reviewer is like, what am I supposed to do? I'm interested to see where the mystery goes. I gotta give it a 6.1, so it gets that red tomato. I'm starting to resent the binge model of television. Because, like, I thought Fallout honestly just came out. Like, didn't it just come out, like, last Monday? And then the finale came out, like, two days ago? And I'm like, the, the chance to be part of the cultural moment is now already gone. Like, it, it was only in the discourse for, like, a week. No, it all came out on Wednesday? I was going to say even worse, but what do I care? <laughs> because I'm not going to see it anyway. So I'm glad that you got to watch it all this weekend. That's great. I'm just saying you don't, there used to be like two, there's an echo in television. You would watch Everybody Loves Raymond, 8 p.m. CBS on Mondays, and then you would laugh your ass off and be like, it's the funniest show I've ever seen. And then you would go to school or work and you would talk about it with the coworkers and other students in your class. And that was like the, the, the second alarm of the two alarm chili of watching great TV. And you'll be like, oh, I wonder what, how the conflict between Marie and Deborah is going to shake out. And what's Raymond going to do? His allegiances are divided. Nowadays, it's like, I already saw the series finale. Marie dies. Fucking who cares? Everyone hates their coworkers now. I, I, I worry that everybody, like, hates everybody now. Not everybody, but, like, some people. 
Did you see the discourse that popped up on Twitter because of like a completely in innocuous photo where the dude, the, the millennial, case in point, was he leaned down and he took a picture next to a pub sign that said like, no kids allowed, but please bring your dogs. And he was like, yeah. That I have no problem with. I described it as a, an innocuous photo. Some of the replies to it actually made me feel like the fundamental fabric of society is eroding. People were running a thought experiment that was like, if your pet and a stranger's child were drowning, which one would you save? And then people were like, the stranger's child, obviously, four likes, 100 replies. My dog, obviously, 17,000 likes, like 12 comments. And I'm like, what is going on here, man? Just save both. I reject me. I'm, I'm Michael Phelps. I reject the premise of the question. I would save both. Are you mad at me? I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying like, okay, Tomo's down here. If it's Ruka and it's some stranger's six-year-old and they're both getting pulled down by the undercurrent and I can only save one, Ruka, I gave you a good life. You're making a noble sacrifice. I'm, I'm going for the kid, man, 100%. Tomo, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Ruka's a strong swimmer. He can handle himself. Now, I'm not that... I can swim, but I'm not that good of a swimmer. So, like, it's possible that everybody involved is going to perish if I'm the one that has to try to save us. So I would really rather, like, somebody else did it, but if nobody else is there, then you got to do what you got to do, man. These hypotheticals never happen, though. You ever hear of a little thing called visualization? It's a foundational element of sports psychology. You at the damn firehouse. Bro, why are we going over what we would do in a fire? We're not in a fire right now. Why don't we just wait for the fire and like play it by ear? You know what's crazy too? I don't mean this to be rude. And I like pets. I have pets myself. I guess I'm an asshole in a way because I just value <laughs> human life higher. It's hard to admit that these days. People don't like comedy is illegal. That being said, what if it was your goldfish about to die of thirst or someone else's hamster about to drown? Who do you save? Because I mean, well, I know, people are very attached to their dogs and their cats. Don't get me wrong. And their Komodo dragons and shit like that. But once we get down in the goldfish territory <laughs> guinea pig ter like I, my friend had guinea pigs growing up and it was not like he, he would just come to class one day and be like my guinea pig died and you'd be like yeah that's sort of like oh what happened this time it's i feel like guinea pigs they don't die like noble deaths they always like get eaten by their family or you're like yeah i just woke up one day and like he exploded or something like that <laughs> sorry it's not funny I've never heard a story that was like, my guinea pig died, and it was like, oh, what happened? And it was like, oh, you know, we put him to sleep. It was like always, like, he had something growing out of, like, the back of his head, and then just one day I woke up and there was no head. Like, it's... It, you're right, it is always some Final Destination shit. Like, he got his legs stuck in the wheel, and then, like, when, by the time I woke up, it was too late. Say something that's relatable for my seven-month-old. I think it's kind of crazy, like people think it's so easy to be a baby, but actually it's gotta be like a little horrifying when you come at it from the perspective of an adult. Cause like you need something, you can't get it for yourself, but then like you can't express yourself with any nuance at all. Like you can't be like, you know, I crap myself. All you, all you got is and then you're like already full and your tummy feels bad and they're like oh you must be hungry and you're like no bro and then they like feed you and you eat a little bit and then they're like oh i guess he just wants to cry <laughs> just let him cry it out my two-year-old's cracking up right now <laughs> my daughter did say this weekend she said it's hard to be three. And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, my head flips a lot. And I said, what do you mean your head flips? And then she said, it says, wear these shoes, 
Then it says, wear these shoes. Then it says, wear these shoes. And I'm like, I get it. Because I'm trying to get out the damn door to get to, you know, fucking calligraphy class or whatever. And I'm like, what shoes do you want? And she's like, winter boots. And I'm like, you can't wear winter boots to gymnastics. Like, they're, they're going to think that I'm a derelict dad or something like that. It's like having DoorDash deliver your daughter's lunch to school or something like that. They're like, this person is not a good parent. It's hard to be any age. It's honestly, no disrespect, it's like not that hard to be 28. Obviously, I'm talking about like from my own perspective. It's not really that hard to be 35 either. Like sometimes I have like more responsibility than I would like to have on any given day, but that's about it. Thank God I'm 27. 35 with no kids is easy street. I believe that. But like, sure, you get back like six extra hours of possible free time every day, but then you got to spend at least four of it uh, advocating for like a pub to be dog friendly, but child free. So like it really basically comes out in the wash. I'm just saying we're not so different. Four hours of getting into Twitter arguments with 14 year old kids from the Philippines about social issues in Britain. I mean, we're all getting crushed by the same yoke is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, no, don't, don't get me wrong. I saw the discourse about the, the child-free pub. I'm just, I'm not a deep state guy. I don't think the elites have to throw us like one piece of food and get us to fight each other. I think it's a problem with the human condition that we just choose to fight each other. The dude just took a picture with a sign. I, I find like anti-child energy a little cringe. But he wasn't doing that, he was just expressing himself. And then it created like a, an enormous ripple where people were like, I saw people having discussions like, oh, is it so wrong that like one space in the entire country doesn't have kids in it? You know, but if you make it child free, then moms do most of the parenting, so moms won't ever be able to go anywhere social. Like it's just, they're, they're driving each other crazy, man. You're on the same team. But I will say there were people that are like, kids shouldn't be in an establishment that serves alcohol anyway. You are going to fuck this up for everybody. Shut the fuck up, you 11th grader. If you can't take your toddler into a pub, have fish and chips and a pint of Guinness, because like, oh, eight hours from now, some dude is going to throw up on the bar, then, then society has fallen. That's all I'm going to say, okay? It is weird. You can take your kid into the liquor store, at least in Canada, when they're young. Like nobody looks at you like you're a degenerate if you and your two-year-old go into the liquor store. Because you're like, obviously they're not feeding fucking fireball to their two-year-old. But it, there must be an age where like that's not okay anymore, right? Like, if my daughter is 17, and I'm like, hey, I've just got to run in real quick, and she comes in with me, aren't they going to be like, I can't sell you this, because, like, she's underage? And I'll be like, you sold it to me when she was 23 months old. It's a rhetorical fallacy, is what I'm trying to say, cashier at the liquor store. It's a rhetorical fallacy. I did see the post as well, where the lady was mad that someone took their baby into the dispensary. And she was also mad that somebody left their baby in the stroller outside of the dispensary. And I was like, I don't really know what's going on in there, but I'm pretty sure, I think it's illegal, but it probably should be legal to take your baby into the dispensary. Because they're not like going to blow smoke in the baby's face, right? Like they're just selling you cannabis in a package. Isn't it just like an Apple store, but for getting high? Yes, you've pretty much got it. Okay. I think you should be able to take your five-year-old into a dispensary then. What it was well, legal, but it's like, hey, relax. If it's legal, make it legal, man. Yeah, kids can go to the LCBO. You could bring your dog in, but you can't take your kid in. See, I'm just trying to start a fight now. Okay, okay. Anything to distract me from Jokerless, okay? Nickelback son or Reddit daughter? Oh, man. Can I tell you something, though? I did yesterday. It had been a while, so I've, I thought I'm going to go in and check on my friends at the r slash antinatalist subreddit. And I think I, I learned something. I freed my, I think I freed myself from yet another yoke that I had been operating on. 
you know, we're all Plato's myth of the cave, right? We're all seeing shadows on the wall and then coming up with what those shadows are without actually seeing what's creating the light in the first place. I thought that... I don't mean to insult anybody's beliefs necessarily. This is just one man's opinion, okay? And it's full of rhetorical fallacies, which I know you guys go crazy for on r slash antinatalist. But anyway, I, I went to r slash antinatalist and I, I was seeing the sort by top this month. And it was like, you will never be... Uh, an environmentalist if you have one child. One, having one child cancels out like a hundred people going vegan, blah, blah, blah. And I started to like look through like the post history of the OPs that make this stuff and I realized it's LARPing. It's, it's debate club LARPing and most of them are between the ages of 12 and 25. Which is fine, there's nothing right, it's a representation of a slice of society. But p the people that get into the comments it's a little circle jerk about like, yeah, having kids is bad and also life is all suffering. So having a child is basically like doing a crime to them. And then they're like, but if a, if a natalist came at you with this argument, how would you steel man it so that you could still have the upper hand in the position, but rebuke it still? And then they get into like these discussions about um, like how to strengthen their arguments, which is good. You know, it's good to improve your rhetoric. But I was like... I took it a little bit more as it's an exercise in rhetoric and debate instead of like they actually 100, well maybe I'm putting words in their mouth, but I don't know if it's 100% that they, they died in the wool, believe in antinatalism, or if it's just a great opportunity for intellectual, intellectual gymnastics. Now child free, I can't speak for that because I don't go there because the people there are a little bit <laughs> more sane most of the time. So true. Say what you will about the tenets of anti-natalism, Donnie, but at least it's an ethos. We can't fight a two front war against anti-natalism and r slash teachers at the same time. We've made our peace with r slash teachers and with r slash anti-natalism. I circled back at the end and said, you know, to render that to, to Caesar with that which is Caesar's, okay? What am I doing as a 35-year-old man with a kid going to r slash anti-natalism and then going like, what are they talking about over here? Like, it's just, you're asking for trouble. Straight son or flush daughter? I'm not answering that question. That's, that's a problematic question. I hope both of my kids flush. The son and the daughter. And the Holy Ghost! Club me? So true. I mean, that's what I'm saying, bro. <clears throat> me talking to the other cavemen. <laughs> he says, he emits a series of grunts. Remember, your, your hunting and gathering skills are valid. And I'm like, brother, I was talking about cards here, and now you're, you're hitting me with the self-care conversation? Can you sing some genuine? Oh, you mean the burp song? Burp, 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 burp. I'm just a bachelor looking for a partner. Someone who knows how to ride without trying to fall in love. Got to be compatible. Push it to the limit. Be sure when I break it off, she's not gonna wanna get off. You're horny. Let's do it, riding on my pony, my saddles, waiting, come and jump on it, like that, like that genuine song.